Assalamu alaikum. If you are joining us for the first time, my name is Gregory Okello, or if you like, you can call me Man Greg. Welcome to Let's Face It, the place where I share with you everything that you should be aware about, but it is never on the news. Now, if you are a human being, then you have definitely heard this. Yes, and this coming month, expect to hear more of this, be it live, on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, anywhere to be honest. The month we are getting to is very crucial. That is why today of all the times I could be alive, I saw it wise to talk about this today. In today's episode, we are going to look at some of the things I bet, I bet you should know about the religion of Islam, Ramadan, and why I will be fasting this year. In order to face this, let us all start from the beginning. Okay, well not really at the beginning because unlike Christianity, the religion of Islam did not start from the beginning. It started somewhere in between. What am I even saying? The religion of Islam began approximately 1,411 years ago when Muslims believed that a man by the name Muhammad from the Arabian city of Mecca started receiving revelations from Allah through his angel Gabriel. The same revelations that were collected into a 114 chapter holy book known as the Quran and the Muslims believe that it contains the exact words of God which as we are told by Dr. Musharraf Hussein is the main purpose of Islam, the belief in God. First and foremost, of course, is belief in God, uh, in an almighty God, and, and really, that is it, to be honest. The rest of the two major uh, beliefs, that is, the prophethood uh, and the um, hereafter, all revolve around this, and of course, we'll be talking about the six uh, beliefs, angels, the books, uh, the hereafter, the predestination, um, but really it is all about one God and all these other uh, elements and tenets of the faith really reinforce the belief in one supreme, almighty, all-powerful God really. Without a doubt, we all see that this religion originated from Arabia and spread all over the world. In fact, According to worldpopulationreview.com, Islam is the world's second largest religion in the world with over 1.9 billion followers. And the country with the highest Muslim population are Indonesia, Pakistan, and India. Now listen to this. The same article predicts that Islam is the fastest growing religion and is forecasted to grow faster than Christianity come 2050. And I believe this is highly triggered by the number of people who convert to Islam annually. Check out this video that interviewed some of the converts to the Islam religion and what they said about the experience. I worked in an environment with a lot of Muslims and they would talk to me about Islam. Basically, I had something of a crisis of faith. I needed to find a path and a way to get away from where I was at. I never felt a connection to God. So at that point, I decided to learn about Islam from an insider's perspective. It was amazing to find something that embodied the beliefs that I already held true, whether or not they were taught from me from previous situations. It was really natural and what I feel like I've always believed. It sort of made the things that I grew up with sort of make sense. And it was like the best thing I ever did in my life. I said, I want to convert to Islam. And immediately it was anger. So you're Muslim now, like Osama? When you see someone with a broken heart and you think that you are causing it, I actually took it off. They're like, oh, you're in the wrong religion. You're doing the wrong things. Oh, it's so strict. Oh, you can't do this. You can't go out to party. You can't do this. I'm like, you know what? It's better for me to be where I'm at. It's difficult defending a whole religion on my own that I'm still trying to come to terms with myself. There's a lot of misconceptions about Islam. Women who wear hijab are oppressed. Women are inherently lesser in Islam. Muslims are Arab. You're black. How can you be a Muslim? A Muslim's a terrorist. I have to say, I think I kind of bought into them as a child in post 9-11. Muslims are people, and you can't fit people into a box as much as you want to. You see it on YouTube, you see it on TV, people being anti-Muslim, anti-Muslim. I wanted to show people that Muslim does not even Equal terrorists. Yes! You tell them, girl, Muslim does not equal terrorism. It's high time that this belief ended. Islam is one of the most welcoming religions, and believe it or not, it is growing. 
all you need to do to be a Muslim is to know how to say the Shahada, which is the Muslim profession of faith, which declares that I bear witness that there is no deity but God, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of God. Muslims population worldwide is growing with Indonesia in Asia having the highest population, gathering a total of 13% out of the 24% we have worldwide. In America, Illinois is the state with the most number of Muslims. Russia having the most number of Muslims in Europe, Nigeria having the most number of Muslims in Africa, and New South Wales having the most number of Muslims in Australia. And no, I know, maybe you are asking, what about India? Man, Greg, in all these calculations, we believe India should be at least mentioned when talking about Islam. Well, here is an analysis that was done by IndianExpress.com, which claims, you know what, for this one, you better just watch. Currently, Indonesia has the largest Muslim population. There are two main reasons for rising population of Muslims by 2050. Firstly, high fertility rates and secondly, young median age. According to the report, Muslim women in India have an average of 3.2 children per woman, while in other religions, the average is 2.3. Muslim population in India will grow by 2050. However, 3 in 4 people in India will still be Hindus. According to this report, the population of Hindus in India will be larger than the Muslim populations in largest Muslim states that is India, Pakistan, Indonesia, Nigeria and Bangladesh combined. The research centre has projected the Muslim population will increase faster than the world population as a whole. <laughs> if Mecca was a capital city, India would be applying to take over the title deed from Saudi Arabia. Anyway. Talking of Mecca located in Saudi Arabia, this is the holiest shrine in Islam. As a matter of fact, every born Muslim is expected to visit this place at least once in their lifetime. Mecca sits in the western mountains of Saudi Arabia, in a sanctuary roughly 100 miles square. Since long before Islam, it has been considered sacred territory, where no one could hunt, cut trees or fight. At the heart of the city is a great mosque called Al-Masjid Al-Haram, and at its center is the Kaaba. Muslims don't worship the Kaaba. They worship what it represents, the one God. Hajj takes place in and around Mecca. It is a series of rituals performed between the 8th and 13th days of the last month of the Islamic calendar. While circling the Kaaba is the final act of the pilgrimage, it is also the top priority for pilgrims when they first get to Mecca. For Muslims who have prayed in this direction every day for years, seeing the Kaaba for the first time is almost overwhelming. Anyway, let us look at Ramadan, the month that Muslims fast and pray from sunrise to sunset. Muslims then break their daily fast by sharing meals with family and friends. And when Ramadan ends, they have a three-day celebration known as Eid ul fitr However, apart from just eating, they are supposed to avoid drinking, including water, smoking, sexual activity, unkind or impure thoughts, and words of immoral behavior. This is because during Ramadan, everyone practices what is called self-restraint and self-reflection. It is the moment when Muslims cleanse the soul and have empathy for those in the world who are hungry, and less fortunate. However, regardless of all this, Muslims will still carry on their day-to-day -day life as normal, be it going to school, going to work, and some of them will prefer staying at home and read the entire Quran while saying prayers and attending the mosque, especially during Ramadan. All the Muslims who are of age and are in good health are required to fast. The sick, the elderly, along with the travelers, pregnant women, and those who are nursing are exempt although they are supposed to make up for that in the future by helping or feeding the poor. In the long run, in today's episode, I just wanted to wish all my Muslim brothers and sisters a very peaceful Ramadan. Enjoy! Don't stay peaceful because the season requires you to be peaceful, but because you want to stay peaceful. I will be in the walk with you throughout this time, and I just want you to know that regardless of what you are going through, Allah will always love you and will be with you in this journey. 
Before I go, here is a rapid fire of everything that has happened this past week in under one minute. Muslims prepare for the Ramadan throughout the world while France bans the wearing of hijab until the age of 18. Hip-hop legend DMX as well as Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, passes on. Black Lives Matter's demonstration erupt once again in Minneapolis as cop shoots and kills 20-year-old black man, Dante Wright. That was our show for today. Until next time, peace.